Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today we are going to do an intro to Microsoft Excel or a tutorial of Microsoft Excel. And now whether you're a completely new user to Excel and you've never used it before, or even if you've used Excel before and you're looking to find out about more advanced functionality of Excel, this video is for you. Now my goal is by the end of this video, you will know how to use Microsoft Excel, both the basics and some of the more advanced functionality. So if I do a good job, today you will be able to do that if I don't then I'll apologize in advance now one of the first questions you might be wondering is well what is Microsoft Excel well Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet program and with a spreadsheet program what you can do is you could analyze data in really amazing ways you could find insights in your data and you could also analyze trends with this video I'm gonna cover a whole bunch of content if there's some content that you're particularly interested in you could go down to the timestamps at the bottom and you could just click into the section that you care about if you just want to watch the whole video that'll really give you a strong foundation in Microsoft Excel and trust me if you watch this whole thing you will know how to use Excel by the end of this the first thing that we're gonna start out with is how do you get Microsoft Excel and to do that why don't we jump on the PC and I'll show you how to do it here I am on my desktop and my computer came with Office pre-installed. If you already have Office pre-installed, what you can do is you can simply click on the Excel icon. Excel is the one with an X and it's a green icon. However, if you don't have Office on your machine, what you can do is open up a web browser. I'm gonna click into Chrome and then navigate to the website office.com. Com. Once you land on office.com, you'll see two different options. One is get office, one is sign in. If you want Excel on your desktop, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on get office. Excel on the desktop is the full feature rich program. There are a few different options. You could get a subscription to Office 365. With a subscription, not only do you get Excel, but you also get a number of other apps as well. The difference between these two subscriptions with this one, which is a little more expensive, you could share it with up to uh, six people total. With the Office 365 Personal, it's limited to just one person. But once again, you get all of these apps, including Excel. If you'd rather just pay for it one time, there's also an option, Office Home and Student, which is $150, and you get Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and you just pay for it once, and then you get the software on your machine. Alternatively, what you can do is if you're not interested in paying for Office and you'd rather use it for free, what you can do is you could also use it for free online. The way to do that is on my screen here, what you're gonna do is you click on sign in and you're gonna land on this sign in page. What you do then is you could sign in if you have an existing Microsoft account. If you don't have an existing Microsoft account, you could cl simply click on create new and then you could create a new account. I already have an account, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and type in my account and then I'm gonna sign in and you type in your username and then you type in your password. Once you enter your password, just simply click on sign in and then you'll land on office.com. Within office.com, you'll see all your different apps and so I could click on Excel and I could just jump into a new uh, spreadsheet or I could go to an existing spreadsheet. Okay, so you have these two options. You could get what's called the desktop software, which is included on Windows, which I showed you before, or you could get the web software. So what is the difference? Well, in terms of kind of basic usage of Excel, both of them are pretty similar. You'll be able to do all the basic functionality, whichever one you choose. The web offering is still a lot newer, and so it doesn't have quite the same feature parity as what you'll find in the desktop version, although Microsoft is doing a really good job at adding more and more functionality. If you wanna use Excel while you're offline, so let's say you're on an airplane or maybe a train um, or somewhere where you don't have internet connectivity, the online app of course won't work because you're not online and so then the offline version or the desktop software is probably a good choice. So you just have to decide what are your needs and which uh, one do you wanna get. Now that we've looked at how you can get Microsoft Excel, the next thing I wanna do is why don't we just jump into Excel. And for this, I'm gonna be using the desktop software. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Excel on my taskbar. I could also simply search for Excel, type it in. It'll show up as my best match, but I'm gonna go ahead and just click on it on my taskbar. And the version that I'm using in today's video is Office 365, uh, in the version of Excel that comes with Office 365. So this is the latest and greatest that's available. When you first open Excel, you land on this screen and this is called the home screen. And so on the left hand side, you'll see that it's called home. What you'll see on this page is you have a blank workbook that you could jump into if you just wanna start from scratch. You also have a number of templates. You have some learning templates. You have a welcome to Excel, get more out of pivot tables. 
If you're new to Excel, this is a very nice sheet to walk through and it really does a good job at introducing Excel. You also have a number of templates that you could choose from and if you want more, you could simply click on more templates. Down below the page, you have all of your recent Excel uh, workbooks that you've been working on. Uh, and what you can do is if, if you don't see it immediately in the list, you can also search for it. So today we're gonna be looking at my tutorial sheet so I could search for tutorial. And what you'll see is it pops up with Excel tutorial. So you could also search the list. What I can also do is I could pin sheets. Um, so here if I click on the pin icon, it'll add it to my pin tab. And then I could also see workbooks that other people have shared with me. Now what I could do is, uh, let's say that I wanna see more templates, I could also click on new, and this gives me the full comp comprehensive view of all the templates that I have, also categorized. And I could also click on open if I want a, a more expansive recent list, or if I wanna open it, say from a OneDrive location or a SharePoint site, um, or I could just browse my PC for a file. So I have lots of different options to get back to existing content. And one of the fun things is when I worked at Microsoft, I actually got to work on designing this new page. So I hope you like it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about it. If you think it's good, if you think that we could improve it even more, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. What I'm gonna do for today is we're going to click into this workbook called Excel Tutorial. I've included a link in the description if you want access to this sheet. And we're gonna start on the first worksheet called Welcome to Kevin's Excel Tutorial. Here we are in Excel now. This is the core experience that you see when you jump into a new sheet. We're gonna click through these different worksheets within this workbook, and if you'd rather jump ahead to one of the sections, feel free to just go through the timestamps that I listed down in the description, and you can jump forward to what you care about. If instead you wanna follow it end to end, just keep watching. What we're gonna do first is let's jump to the orientation worksheet. So I'm gonna jump in here, and the first question is, well, where am I? Right now, we're in a workbook, and this is the orientation worksheet. What I could do is I could click on these worksheets, and here, what I could do is I could rename a worksheet, I could insert a new worksheet, I could even change the color on different worksheets. So maybe I'll make this one red. Now, what is this box called right here? I have all these boxes on the sheet we refer to one of these boxes as a cell. And how do I reference a cell? Well, so right here, right now, you have things that are called columns. So this is column A, and then this is row six. That's how a spreadsheet is set up. You have columns, and then you have rows. And so if I wanna reference an individual cell, so let's say I'm in this cell, what I would say is I'm in, I'm in cell C and then six. So you start with the column, and then you say the row. And you can see up here as well, it says that I'm in cell C6. And what you can also do is you could have a range of cells. So here I'm in cell A8 through C8. Uh, so that's how you could reference cells. And I've included this picture of Battleship because when I look at Excel and I think of cells, it very much reminds me of a game of Battleship, how you have your columns and you have your rows. It's kind of the same, uh, same uh, similar idea or similar setup. Okay, so that's kind of just the basics of Excel. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna click on format. And let me zoom in a little bit here. What we have is some different ways you could format numbers. And so we're gonna have some fun little questions here. So what's my annual salary? Well, what you could do is right now, when you look at this number, it's a very big number because my annual salary is very high. So how do we figure out or how do we view this in a better way? Well, you have different formatting options. So here I could apply an accounting number format. So I'll click on that and that turns it into a dollar value. I could also get rid of the decimals since they don't really add too much. And that is not my annual salary. I do not make that much. I wish I did, but I don't. When I scroll down the page here, how many subscribers do I get a day on YouTube? And you probably notice the theme here that these are all made up numbers. Uh, but this number is also hard to read. So instead of doing a dollar sign, what I could do is I could add commas. And so here this added a comma to it. Here, once again, I could get rid of decimals or I could add decimals. And so it just makes numbers easier to read when you apply formatting to those numbers uh, using this formatting section right up here on the page. What you can also do is, let's say I have fractions, I could apply a fraction format and the way to do that is I simply click on these styles up here and as I go down, you know, you can see all types of different uh, formats that you could apply, but down here I could apply a fraction and that'll say one half. So depending on how you wanna see your number, you could format it in more friendly names. 
Now, another thing that you can do too is I've entered some text here, and let's say that you know right now all the text is in this one cell, but what if I want it to cover multiple columns? So I'll simply highlight that first cell that the text is in, and I'll highlight all the columns I want the text to show up in. And there's this option called Merge and Center. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And what you'll notice is it simply merged all these cells together, and now it shows the text across those. What I can also do is you have other formatting at options where you could wrap text. So today, you know, this goes through multiple cells off to the right. I could click on wrap text and what that'll do is it simply puts all the text within this one cell. So those are a few different formatting options. I could also do things like I could fill with a color, I could adjust the font color. So there are lots of different ways that I could format text and numbers within Microsoft Excel. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into how to adjust the cell size. So here in my sheet, I have this table of data and I have my columns, I have my rows. What you can do is if you click in between a row, I could expand the size of the row or I could uh, contract it. I could do the same with columns as well. When I click in between columns, I could expand and contract uh, the size of the columns. But let's say that I have a column here and there's lots of empty space. You know, I can manually pull it in and make that better, but oh, maybe I went too far and now I cut off some text. What you can do is you could simply double click on this separation. So I'm gonna double click and it simply adjusts it to make sure it fits all the text nicely. I could also do the same with rows. Uh, here I'm gonna click into the row and then there I could reduce the height. A quick little trick that you can do if you want all your data to fit perfectly is you simply click up here in the top left hand corner and then I'm gonna double click on the column and you'll notice now that all the columns adjusted to the text size and then I could do the same with the row and it'll adjust all the rows. Um, so kind of a nice way to simply format your data. What I can also do is let's say I'm working with my data and I wanna insert a column. Let's say I wanted some other value in between model and color. I could simply right click up here and I could go to insert. So let's say I insert another column and then I could go in between rows and I could do the same where I right click and then I could insert and then I'll appear right above. If I wanted to say add another vehicle or maybe I wanna add some other attribute about the vehicle. So that's how I could manipulate data on a sheet. Okay, so that's a little bit about formatting, adjusting cells and all that, but the true power of Excel comes from using functions and formulas. So why don't we do a quick tutorial and we'll look at how you can use those. I'm gonna click into this basic formula sheet and what I wanna show is, let's start off with just basic addition. So I'm gonna click into this cell and I wanna add five and four. And now obviously I know what that is. Um, and so a quick little trick is I could highlight those two cells and then if you look down here in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see some information about it. So the sum is nine, I have two numbers that I've selected and the average is 4.5. So just kind of very quick information that you can get when you highlight numbers. But now what I wanna do is I wanna add these. And so we're gonna go through the basics of how you create a formula. And the way you always start a formula is you start with the equal sign. And then what I can do is I'll simply say, one way you could do addition is you say five and then plus four. So I could do that and that'll tell me nine. But the power of Excel comes from referencing these different cells. And so I'm gonna get rid of these numbers here. And what we're gonna say is I'll say equals and then I could simply click on A2 and then I could say plus A3. And so what that's gonna do now is it simply adds those two cells together and it tells me that it's nine. Now, what I could also do is instead of going through, like here, you know, I have a few more numbers that show up, instead of going through and saying, hey, I wanna take this plus this plus this, what I can do instead is there's another formula called sum. So I'm gonna type in sum and then I'm gonna open parentheses and now what I do is I simply highlight all the items that I wanna sum and then I close the parentheses hit enter and there it's added up all the values. Now what I can also do is I could also type in equals sum and I could do that across these numbers which are horizontal and I'll close the parentheses and hit enter and now it added up all these numbers. Now a nice little shortcut and this is kind of more of a pro move, what you can do is you simply press the alt and the equals key at the same time. So I'm gonna press alt and equals and you'll notice that it automatically sums up all those values and I could hit enter. If you're not big into learning formulas or remembering, remembering formulas, what you can also do is up here in the right hand corner, there's something called auto sum. So if I click on that, I could simply click on sum or I could go through and we could do average. I could go through and do average. You could also count the numbers that appear within there and you could also do the max and the min. So there are lots of different functions you could just automatically apply. It takes some of the most common ones and presents it within this little auto sum list. 
What's also nice with the, uh, the sum function, so I'm gonna do equals sum again, what you can do is you can highlight a set of numbers and then I'm gonna enter a comma and I can highlight another set of numbers and I'm gonna hit a comma and then I'm gonna select another number and then close parentheses and what that did is it added up all of these different numbers. So I'll click into the formula field and you can see all the numbers that it added up. So pretty powerful. Now, what would addition be without subtraction? Well, here what you could do is I could say equals this cell and then minus this cell. And there it subtracted the two. You could also multiply, if I click on this one, the asterisk is the multiply sign and I'll click on this next cell and that'll multiply the two. And you could also divide where I click on 100 and then forward slash 10 and that'll divide, the, that'll divide 100 by 10, which is 10. And I showed you earlier, with this auto sum, what I could do is I could click on average, that'll give me the average across those numbers. I could simply go up here and I could click on max and that'll give me the max of all those numbers. And here I could count all the different numbers that appear within this set. Um, so using Excel, it's very easy to use Excel when you use functions and formulas, you could really do some nice uh, kind of calculations on your data in the sheet. When, you, when I think of Excel, it's really like a very powerful calculator. Okay, now that we wrapped up on basic formulas, now we're gonna jump into fill series and I'll kind of walk through what I mean by this. So let's say I have this table of data. So it's a car dealership and I wanna know what my profit margin is. Well, to calculate profit margin, you wanna take the price and you wanna subtract the cost. So here I'm gonna enter a formula again. I'm gonna type in equals and then we'll take cell E4 minus cell F4. And so this is my profit margin. Now what I mean by fill series is see that little plus sign, if I double click on it, it'll simply take my formula and apply it all the way down. So here if I click into this cell and I click on, uh, I click into the formula, you'll notice that what it's doing is it's taking this value minus this value. So it basically took my formula and applied it all the way down, which is pretty nice. Now one of the things I might also wanna do is let's say I wanna do my profit margin less Kevin's fee, because maybe I own this dealership and I wanna get paid for every car that gets sold. The price minus the cost, and then here's my fee. So I'll minus my fee there. And now I could copy the formula all the way down. Now one of the problems is when I go to the second cell, you'll see that it moved all of these down one. That's called a relative cell reference. What I wanna do is I wanted to keep this reference to this spot. And what I could do then is I'll go back to my original formula. You could insert a dollar sign before the management fee before the letter and before the number. And what that basically tells Excel is that you wanna fix the position of that cell when you do your calculation. So I'm gonna hit enter and now I could apply that again. And here if I go into the last cell, you'll see now that it locked the management fee, but the price and the cost or the calculation for the profit margin adjusted based on where I was in the sheet. That's referred to as a relative reference and then I have my absolute reference there. What I can also do, just a little shortcut, if you hate entering dollar signs, you could also press the F4 key when you're hovering over this value and that'll automatically toggle back and forth between an absolute reference. And you could also just do a dollar sign for a row or for the column, depending on how you're um, filling your formula. So there, there it is. One of the things I can also do with this sheet I can also transpose the data. So right now you see that the data is organized in kind of this vertical orientation where I have my column headers and then the data down below. But maybe I wanna have my column headers on the side instead of above. So what I can do is I can highlight all my data and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to paste. So I'm gonna go up to paste, I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna go to paste special and now I'm gonna go to transpose. And so I'm gonna click okay. And you'll see what happened is it transposed all my data. So now all of my columns are now rows and all of, uh, all of my data now appears uh, going this way. Um, so it's a nice way if you wanna adjust the orientation of your data. Um, and <clears throat> another thing that I wanna show with filling data is Excel is pretty smart when you fill data down. Um, so here I have Q1 and you know maybe this is the total number of sales I sold each quarter. So if I click on Q1 and once again, I'm gonna click to drop that down. Excel is smart knowing that if there's a Q1, well, there are gonna be four quarters in a year and it automatically increments that by one. So when you fill with Excel, it's pretty smart about how it fills. The next thing that we're going to look at is how to split data. So I'm gonna click into the split data tab 
In here, one of the things that you'll see is I have first name and then I have last name. What I would like to do is I wanna separate these by first name and then last name. So what I can do, this is a really neat thing to separate data. What you can do is click on all these names and then we're gonna click on the data tab and within the data tab, we are going to click on something called text to columns. And what we're gonna say is this is delimited. So I'm gonna click on next. And the way that they're separated is there's a space in between them, but you could also do it by tab, semicolon, comma, or any other way that the data might be separated. So I'm gonna click on next then. And for the destination, what we're gonna do is right now it wants to put it in A2. What I'm gonna say is let's put it into B2. Um, so basically I want the data to go into this cell and I'm gonna click on finish and what you'll see happened is it just separated all of my list by the space that appears and it split them up between first name and last name. So kind of a nice way you can manipulate your data. The next thing that we're gonna look at is filtering and sorting data. This is something that I really love and really helps me look at my data in better ways. I click on the filter and sort, and what I can do now is so I have this data table of all these different cars, models, colors, mileage, price, and cost. And what I can do is I'm gonna go up into the data tab up on top, and I'm gonna click on this thing called filter. So we're gonna apply a filter, and what happened is it added this little drop down with an arrow on top of all of the different columns. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And what you'll see I can do is I could sort now. I could sort A to Z, I could sort Z to A, I could sort by different colors if I had colors there. So let me go ahead and I'll just sort by the name. So here I sorted from A to Z, and so now it starts with Chevrolet all the way down to Toyota at the bottom. What I can also do is I could sort from largest to smallest, or, uh, or smallest to largest, or largest to smallest. So here I'll see you know, which one cost me the most, which one cost the least. Um, so you could sort your uh, lists by largest to smallest. What I can also do is let's say that I only want to see my Chevrolets in this list, that's called filtering. So what I can do is I'll click on this again and here you'll see all the different unique items that appear within this list. And so I'm gonna click on select all to deselect all these items and here I could click on just Chevrolet and I'll click on okay. And now what that's done is it's filtered my list just to my Chevrolets. What I can also do is if I click back on here, I can maybe just see my Chevrolets and my Dodge and then I'll click on okay. And once again, it filtered the list and here I could sort it. Um, so my Chevrolets are together and my Dodges are together. And so that's just a quick overview of how you can filter and sort your data. You could also uh, sort up here. There are also some advanced sorts where you could sort based on one thing and you could add another level. So let's say if they both have the same make, then you sort by model. Um, so you could do some things like that, but you could play around with it and, and play, uh, just see all the advanced power of sorting. The next thing that we're gonna look at is creating tables in Microsoft Excel. Now what's the value or benefit of a table? So I'm gonna go here and I'm back on the Home tab and I'm gonna click on Format as a Table. And we'll just go with, I'll go with the light design. And my table has headers, okay, so I've just inserted it. So the benefit is that it's a little easier to read where each row in the table has this uh, color that's been applied to it, so it's easy to read across. Uh, what you can also do is, uh, let's say that I expand, so here if I click down here, I could expand my table by one, and maybe I wanna call this my margin column, and for the margin one, we did the formula earlier, but I'll take the price minus the cost, and I'll hit enter. What happened is I don't have to drag it down because it's a table, it knows that this formula applies to every single item in the table, so it automatically applies it to the entire table. It's kind of nice, it saves you some time if you know all the data is related. And one thing that's really cool, I didn't actually know this until recently, but something I think is cool, um, up here under table design, there's an option called total row. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And so see what happened is it added a total now. So my total of all my margins is about $12,000. If I click on that value, I get this little drop down, and I could say, well, what's my average? Uh, what's my average margin? Or um, what's my max margin that I have? Um, or I can just say, what's my sum? So with a, with a table, you can also very easily uh, calculate sums. The next thing that I wanna show you is how to do quick analysis in Microsoft Excel. So I just clicked on quick analysis, and one of the things that we could see is, you know, here back to my car data, you know, I have all these different, uh, all these different costs, but let's say I wanna visualize very quickly which one is the most expensive, which one is the least expensive. What I could do is I could right click on this, and I could go down to quick analysis. And so with quick analysis, um, I could also click that button. So here if I um, highlight the data, 
you'll see this quick analysis button. So I'll click on that and I could add data bars to my data. So here I could see, you know, the more expensive ones have the larger data bar behind. I could also apply a color scale. And so there are many different kind of quick analysis tools that I could use when I'm looking at my data, or maybe I just want to identify my top 10%. Um, so just kind of a nice little quick way to analyze your data. The next thing I want to show is ideas and ideas is something new in Excel. It's up here on the home tab uh, and you just click on ideas. This is part of uh, Office 365 and what it does is it'll analyze all my data that I have and it comes up with interesting insights based on it. So here I can see by color, what is the cost? This one's interesting, price and field. Cost appear highly correlated. So the cost and then the price of the car appear highly correlated. Um, the Toyo black Toyotas have a noticeably higher cost. And so what it does is it goes through my data and it finds uh, different outliers in my data. So it calls out kind of interesting insights to me. So that's kind of a fun thing to run against your data to see if there are any interesting insights that might be there. Okay, now that we've looked at ideas, we're gonna go into charts. And I'm gonna show you how to create basic charts in Microsoft Excel. So I have this little table here with you know, I have years on the left-hand side, and then I have conference attendees on the right-hand side. And so what I could do is I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna click on insert, and then under insert, I'm just gonna click on recommended charts. And what you'll see is it just gives me all these different charts that I could insert, and the first one looks pretty good. It shows me attendees on the y-axis, or the vertical axis, and then it shows me the years on the x-axis, or the uh, horizontal axis. And so I'll just say okay. And this inserts a very basic chart for me based on my data that I have over here. What I can also do is I'm going to go back and let's go back to insert. So here I have the same data that I had above, but now we have food sales in different years. And so what I could do is I'll go back, click on recommended charts. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on all charts and I can do a combo chart. Uh, where I have two pieces of data that I wanna that I wanna chart out. And so food sales, maybe I wanna make that a secondary access. So this is my primary one, this is my secondary one. And so my food sales are now against the secondary access. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK. And so this is kind of a nice view where, you know, here I could see the attendees and then I could see the food sales against the number of attendees. Uh, so just kind of quick charts. What I like doing with charts is anytime I insert a chart, I like playing around with it. You know, here I could click on change chart type and I could go through and you could try different views to see kind of what type of view you like and just kind of experiment with it. See what you like, what you don't like. Um, and uh, it's pretty powerful in terms of what you can do. The next thing that I wanna show is how to freeze a pane. And here I have, once again, I have all my car data in here and I have a lot of data. So here I'm scrolling down. I have hundreds of hundreds of rows that show up. And unfortunately, when I scroll down, I don't know what column D is or what column E is or what column F is. It would be nice to have the header stick with the data. And I can do that with something called freeze panes. So if I click on, I'm gonna click on view, and then you have this option calls, uh, called freeze panes. I'm gonna click on that. And what I could do is I could freeze the top row. You could also do things like freeze the top column, or you could simply choose where you wanna do the split. But I'm just gonna do the top row, and so I froze the top row. So you see that line there's a little darker than the other ones, and now when I scroll down, you'll see that my column header stays in place. So kind of a nice way, especially when you're looking at a large set of data, to know what that data is that you're looking at. The very last thing that I wanna show is pivot tables. And I have a whole separate video on pivot tables that goes really in depth on this topic, uh, but I wanted to do just a quick overview of what you could do with pivot tables, because this is really getting to more advanced levels of functionality in Excel. So here in Excel, I have my card data again, and what I'm gonna do is go back to insert, and now I'm gonna insert a pivot table. And so it selects my data, selects the range, everything looks good, and I'll click on okay. And so what this did is it creates something called a pivot table. I see all my data here. So all the columns appear within this pivot table fields. And now I could do things like, you know, I could drag my color down to a row and I could drag, let's say my total cost by color. So I could drop that in values. And so what that did then is, you know, here are my rows, uh, here's my total cost. And so I could see by cost. So for all my black vehicles, this is the sum of my cost. And you could kind of do, do neat things where you summarize by, well, let me see the count of vehicles that I have by color. 
Um, so what I wanted to do is just give a very quick preview of pivot tables. You could feel free to play around with them and kind of see what the capabilities are. I also have a few additional videos down in the uh, down in the description and in the comments down below uh, with links to more in-depth overviews of what are pivot tables, how do you do conditional formatting, how do you use formulas like VLOOKUP uh, or HLOOKUP and things like that. Um, so there's a lot more that you could do with Excel beyond this. Well, that's the, that's the end of the Excel tutorial. What I wanted to do is just give a quick overview of kind of the core fundamental functionality of Excel, as well as give a little kind of peek at some of the more advanced functionality. I have more videos that go more in depth on that advanced functionality. For example, if you wanna learn about VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP, or if you wanna learn about pivot tables or conditional formatting or a lot more functions and formulas, I have videos that cover all those topics and I've included links in the description if you wanna check those out and really increase your expertise in Microsoft Excel. But with this video, this really covers most of the fundamentals on a day-to-day -day basis. This is most of the stuff that I use and it really helps me use Excel in a, in a really good way and really helps me analyze data, identify insights and all of that. Um, Excel is a super powerful program. Um, hopefully this video helped you uh, really kind of build your skills in Microsoft Excel. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a question in the comments. I always read all the comments that come in and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. If if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please hit that subscribe button. That way you get a notification anytime new content uh, like this comes out. And uh, if you want to, if there are any other questions or any other topics that you want to see me cover in future videos, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create in the future. And that's all I had today. Hopefully you're well on your way to becoming an expert in Microsoft Excel and hopefully it's going to help you either be uh, successful in your professional life by being able to analyze data better or maybe in your personal life if you just want to analyze different, maybe your finances, maybe you're buying a house like me and you wanna look at the data and, and evaluate things. Um, all right, well that's all I have for you today and I'll see you next time, bye.